Good morning, folks. Today we've got news from space, paleoclimate of the oceans, and paleoclimate of disasters. We also have significant things to watch for in space weather, so we'll begin, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star. It was another quiet day. Had a couple mild M-class solar flares, but nothing significant. The only eruptive activity came this morning off the departing limb to the right. We're going to discuss the sunspots and the coronal hole situation. Starting here where you can see that the sunspots are spread, they are not enormous, and the only place where magnetic mixing and large flaring could occur is in the multi-umbral group incoming, from the left. Definitely some development in the caboose, we'll be watching that closely here today. Meanwhile, the large dark patches, coronal holes, straddling the solar equator. Their enhanced solar wind is expected to arrive at Earth within the next two to three days and could spark minor geomagnetic unrest or even low-level storm activity. We'll be watching that as well. Folks, the top four quakes of the last day all struck the Middle East. We're always watching for larger seismicity and things like foreshock signatures. Eyes on this area over the next couple of days to see how the sequence plays out. Up next, we're going out to space, where the somewhat nondescript image of the deep field was able to inform astronomers that gravity has less to do with galactic evolution and star formation than they believed. They're trying to favor alternative means of gas clustering to explain the trends, but honestly, most important thing here is that anytime astronomers discount gravity at this scale, it's a good thing cosmologically. Up next, looks like the Great Barrier Reef would have been unable to exist without a rapid and significant surge in ocean temperatures hundreds of thousands of years ago. This is pretty much the opposite message the climate community likes to send, where a tiny change in temperature is terrifying and jeopardizes everything. Almost certainly not the case. Last but not least, outstanding article here about two huge asteroid impacts about 35 million years ago. Interestingly, they did not find any significant lasting climate impacts, which they also said was the case for Chicxulub, where the main climate impact occurred in just the first 25 years. Interestingly, not only did they fail to find the climate impact, they found these impacts happened about 25,000 years apart, which is pretty close to the 24,000 year double cycle of impactors we've previously identified identified. It's just that those impactors have a slightly different origin point. We've got major events coming at the ranch the next three months. UFO Day is nine days away. Many conferences coming the next two months. Check your calendar. Pick a time. Come see us. ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.